it's good to be full of the Holy Ghost, but it's also be, it's good to be full of the Word of God. And that's the two aspects I want to talk to you tonight about the Word of God, God's Word. It's so important because that's the foundation of everything. But then we have the great and mighty Holy Spirit to bring the Word of God to our remembrance to enable us to give us the ability to do what God's Word said we can do. Thank you for your enthusiasm. You know, it's okay. I'm a preacher. I like people to say amen and get excited. Uh, if you run around the room, I'll run with you. Amen. I'm just, I used to be all out for the devil. I was a drug dealer and drug addict. I shared my testimony this morning. And if I could be all out and crazy for the devil, I can certainly be that way for, with God. And just because I've got a few years on me now, I'm still just as wild and crazy as I was when I was, got saved back when I was 30 years old. I mean, God loves excited people. If we can go to a football game and shout and get crazy and, and just act beyond ourselves, and then but, 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 but when we come into the church, everybody wants to do like this. That's just a stupid religious spirit that gets off on you. We need to shout. I mean, the, it, it, what's better, what Jesus did for us or somebody kicking a field goal and winning a football game? It's a whole lot better. I mean, where would we be if Jesus hasn't done what, we, what he did for us? Amen. He became our substitute. Yeah. He took upon him sin so that we could live a righteous and holy life before God and we could do the things that he told us we could do. Amen. Amen. But it was the word and the spirit working together. Amen. But before I get started, Pastor Darrell, just stand up. Spirit of seeing and a spirit of knowing be increased. I know you're already operating that. A spirit of seeing and a spirit of knowing will be increased exponentially in your life. And it's not just for you and your family, but it's for this congregation here. Amen. To be, a, be able to see by the Spirit of God ahead and deliver a word to, ad, uh, to divert your congregation, your family from uh, doing things or, or the devil uh, interrupting their lives or hindering their lives. A spirit of seeing and a spirit of knowing. And Pastor Francine, wisdom beyond what you've ever experienced before. Not the wisdom that you learned from school and everything, but the wisdom of God to enable you to stand beside this man of God. You, you're a couple, you know that. Won't you just stand up and join hands? Wisdom, beyond the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. So we thank you, Father. We, we, I know you, you love this couple. You love the congregation here. And all these endowments and things that you've placed in them are not only for them, their family, but for the people, the family of God here at the church at TLC. And we thank you for an increase of those things that you told me to speak over them yes, in Jesus' precious thank you, name. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Amen. Now, as I begin to share the Word of God, some of you are going to begin to feel a warmth in your body. And that's not just because they turn the, the air conditioner off. It's the Holy Ghost working in you. And what that is, is it's the healing power of God that's going to begin to work in your life. And it may increase. You may have to get out of a fan. You know, sometimes the, the spiritual things that begin to operate in your life manifest in your flesh. Sometimes when we pray for people, we feel the healing power of God come on us, go through our arms and into the people. And you know, I'm, a, I'm just addicted to that. I'm addicted to the Spirit of God using me to help people. I love it. I used to be addicted to drugs, but it's far better to be addicted to the things of God. It's far better to be addicted to the Word of God because it was the Word of God that pulled me out of the hell that I created for myself. It was the Spirit of God that delivered me from the drugs and the alcohol and the life of sin that I had willfully involved myself in for 13 years. 
I am so thankful for what God did in my life, but he is no respecter of persons. Like I told the men this morning, what God did for me or anybody else you know of or anybody in the word of God, he will do for you if you'll just dare to believe him. But it's the word of God and the spirit of God working together. Now, there's uh, someone here, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but you've been very fearful, anxious about some things. God revealed that to me. Now, I didn't know this. I told this this morning as I was on the plane yesterday, coming here, God began to download some things in me. It reveals some things to me about these services. And then after the, the breakfast this morning, Pastor Dill said, well, we were praying that yesterday, that God would even show you things in the airplane. You know, God wants a relationship with each and every one of us. And we have a relationship with him through his word, but also through the spirit. But uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 it said that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and love and of sound mind. So fear is of the devil. It's not from God. Amen? I said fear is of the devil. God gave us a spirit of power and love and of sound mind. Not a spirit of fear. Actually, fear is from listening to the lies of the devil. Because Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So right now in Jesus' name, I speak to that spirit of fear that's been harassing that peop those people, maybe somebody on the internet. You know, you don't have to be present to get involved in this. If someone over the internet is watching this live or watch it later, the spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus, I break its power. Anxiety, you have no place in the lives of God's children. I break your power now in Jesus' name, and I can declare you to be free now in the name of Jesus. And there's someone, I don't know if you're here or are going to watch it on the internet, but you've been confused. Confusion is not of God. Because if God wanted to hide himself from us or uh, have us to be confused about his, the things uh, uh, of him, we wouldn't have a Bible, would we? That's why God revealed himself through the word of God, through the son of God, through the spirit of God, so that we wouldn't be confused. Let me read something to you in Colossians 1, 9. It said, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask you that you may be, get this, you may be filled, filled, you know, if you got a glass of water and it's filled, you pour more over it, what happens? In it, what happens? It overflows. See, God is the God of overflow. He doesn't want us to be halfway full. He doesn't want us to be three quarters of the way full. He wants us to live in the overflow. Because we're his, we're his children. Those of you that have children, you want the best for your children. I know my earthly father worked two jobs at one time after he retired from the Navy so that me and my brother could live a lifestyle that he didn't, he wasn't able to live as he was a child. But so he said he, uh, that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So no more confusion. Whoever I'm talking to, whether you're here or on the internet, no more confusion in Jesus' name. I just thank you, Father, that you said that they may be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. So we need God's word. We need God's spirit in our lives. Amen. We need God's word and God's spirit in our services. Man. I just, I, I don't know. I left a particular denomination. I know I got born again about 12, 13 years old, but I left that denomination after two or three years because, and they taught salvation, thank God, 
but they didn't teach about healing, deliverance, and some of the things that you learn here. I, I, and, and the world pulled me away as well. But uh, we need the Word of God taught. And I know you get, you get that here. But you need the Spirit of God moving in the midst of people. And we're going to see that in three different areas. Uh, I want to show you in three different areas where the Spirit of God and the Word of God work together. So in, in creation... We can see that, and in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, and also in the ministry of the early church, and the church today. We, we've got to have that. Amen. I got one amen. I said, we've got to have the Word and the Spirit in our services. Amen. Look in Genesis chapter 1. This is the Word of God and the Spirit of God working in creation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And notice this. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That word hovering is also the, the Hebrew word uh, Hover, uh, brooding, you know, like a hen broods over an egg. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. Nothing was happening until God did verse 3. And God said, let there be light. So in the beginning, everything that we know about was created because the Spirit of God was moving. And then God said something. God revealed his plan through the Word. And the Word and the Spirit began to work together. And everything that we know about was created at that time. Amen. The Word and the Spirit is so important in our lives. It doesn't matter how young you are. Come on, youth, you can say amen too. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Just because I'm getting a few years on me, I'm not backing up, I'm not backing down, I'm not going to retire, I'm just going to refine. Glory be to God. I mean, it's okay to get radical about the things of God. We need men and women that are radical about the things of God and say, this is what the Word of God says, and I'm going to do it. If God said it, I can do it. This is what the Spirit of God is revealing to me, and if He said I could do something, I can do it. And nothing's going to stop me. Of course, we've got the name of Jesus. We've got a lot of stuff. But I'm just talking about the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So let's look at the ministry of Jesus concerning the Word. You know, Jesus was the Word made flesh. He's the walking, talking will of God. Let's look at Luke 4, 18 and 19. Luke 4, 18 and 19. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me so I can watch good television programs. <laughs> Huh? So I can go to a football game and really enjoy myself. No, he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. I'm so glad the Spirit of God is upon me and he has anointed me to preach. I love to preach. I'd rather be preaching than anything else. Well, except being with my wife. Glory be to God. Preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. See, you've got to have the Spirit of God to cause people to be delivered. You've got to have the name of Jesus to cause people to be delivered. And we as the body of Christ have all these things available to us to do what Jesus told us, told us that we could do. It's him working with us. We have to willfully yield ourselves to the will, the Word of God, to the Spirit of God. And then we'll see the same results he got. I got one amen. I said, then we'll see the results that he got. We had a young man in Poland, 13 years old. And, he, and we had... Uh, what really wasn't a competition. How would you say it? The children's ministry set us all go. He was only 12. 
Yeah, 12. Uh, the children's minister set a goal for uh, the young youth and the children's department for a certain amount of people to be saved that year. And this little boy got, what was it? 75. 75 people saved. He got several of his Amen. teachers saved. Now, Poland was a Catholic nation. You know, they, they knew the Bible, but they didn't have a relationship with Jesus, most of them. Some of you have come from that background. Thank God for the Baptists, thank God for the Catholics, thank God for all the denominations, but if they're not teaching and preaching the Word of God and are coveting and allowing and desiring and being adamant about having the Holy Ghost in their services, because he, those two aspects, those two elements working together cause creation. And we're going to see how when the Holy Ghost came on Jesus, the Word of God, he was able to step in to the ministry that God had sent him here to fulfill, to be an example for us. So let's continue. He said, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering of sight to the the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Wow. That's what he was anointed for. He was anointed so he could be an example. See, because a lot of people in their minds, they, think, they look at Jesus and think, oh my goodness, I could never accomplish that. But we can. Now, I know I didn't put this in my scriptures, but John 14, 12. One of my favorite scriptures. This is the first scripture I got a revelation of. I'm reading my Bible. Well, it was raining. I'd been working with this guy, my painting contractor, and I couldn't work that day. So I'm at home by myself reading the Bible, and I'm reading John 14, and all of a sudden this verse just jumped off the page and got on the inside of me, and it rent me. You know what rent means? It's ruined. It changed my life. Say, burnt is Alabama's word for ruined. Anyway, Jesus said, if you believe on me, and I do, and many of you do, I dare say probably not anybody in here tonight that don't believe on Jesus. Well, if that's true, the rest of that scripture is true as well. He said, if you believe on me, the works I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Woo! Boy, if I don't put a pep in your step, I don't know what to say about you. That'll wind you up, set you loose. Jesus said that. Yeah. Oh, good. Jesus said that. Well, see, but you could say, oh, no, that'll never happen to me. Guess what? It won't because he's got to have your faith. But see, the faith to act on this scripture is already in there. It's just like a seed. Yeah. When you put a seed in the ground, you put an apple seed in the ground, you can never expect a peach tree to grow, can you? Right? Whatever is in that seed and that word of God has to get into your heart and by your words, by your faith, by your actions, it will begin to work in you and you'll begin to be able to do the things that Jesus told you you can do. He opened blind eyes. He, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. And we can do that today. Come on now, because we've got his spirit We've got his spirit, we got his word, we can do that. Amen. Amen. Say, I can do John 14, 12. I can do John 14, 12. Because the word says I can. The word says I, can. I, believe it. I believe it. Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, burn that on the inside of me. Burn that on the inside of me. I'm getting more excited than most of you, but that's all right. Now, after Jesus was anointed of the Holy Ghost, that he never did any miracles. Let's look at his first miracle. Before. Jesus never did any miracles before the Spirit of God came upon him there at the River Jordan. Uh, uh, John chapter 2, verse 11. This is the story where Jesus turned water into wine. You know the story. He's there at the wedding. 
His mother evidently had something to do with the wedding. They ran out of wine. His mother told Jesus about it. And uh, he basically said, what am I supposed to do? And then she turned to the servants and she said, do what he tells you to do. That's what the Lord is saying to us tonight. Do what he told you to do, like John 14, 12. Do what Jesus told us to do. Come on, church, let's do, let's start doing what Jesus told us to do. Amen. We're his body. You know, the, the, your, and he's the head of the body, right? Does your body do anything separate from your head? Does your head do anything separate from your body? No, it's your head and your body works together, amen? Well, it's the same thing with the body of Christ. And the head reveals things to people like us, to leaders, to your pastors, and we deliver it to you, and when you act on it, then your faith gets involved with it, and you begin to reap the results of it, whatever it is. So in this context, in John 2, verse 11, after he turned the water to wine, he told those guys, he said, fill the pots up with water, because they ran out of wine. And so they filled those pots up, and then they drew the water out, and it wasn't water anymore. A miracle took place. The first miracle that Jesus performed was turning water to wine, and, and the, uh, the guy that was over everything, he said, "This man, this is something. He says, usually at a wedding, they first give the good stuff, but he, saved you, he said, you saved the best to last. Glory be to God. God has saved the best to last. And I believe we're in the beginning stages of the last of the last days. I believe we've got our toes in the greatest revival this world has ever seen, and we get to be a part of it. Woo! Man, if I don't put a pep in your step, it'll put a glide in your stride too. Amen? So it says here, the beginning of the signs of Jesus did at Canaan of Galilee, and he manifested his glory, and his disciples believed him. You know, the world needs to see that you're a real Christian. What do you mean by a real Christian? Believing in the word of God and acting like it's true and seeing people saved, seeing people healed, seeing people filled with the Holy Spirit, seeing people delivered through your hands. Come on now. Really, it's our responsibility as ministers to fill the pulpit. It's your responsibility, those of you that are sitting in tan chairs or wherever you're sitting on the internet, to fill the church. We train you, educate you, mature you, so you can go out and be firebrands for God. Do the works of Jesus like he told us we could do in John 14, 12. So in Jesus' life, he didn't do any mighty works until the Spirit of God came upon him in Luke 4, and then the first miracle we see him do in John 2 was turn water to wine. The Word of God, the living Word of God, when the Holy Spirit came on him, he was able to fulfill the plan of God for his life. And then he went on to Calvary and suffered all the horrible things that you probably heard about last weekend. The beatings, the hanging on the cross, the death, and the mighty resurrection but it was the Holy Spirit that went down into hell after Jesus had paid a price for our sins and he brought him up and Satan and all his cohorts couldn't stop it. Woo, glory to God. Yeah. I think it's Ephesians the Colossians said that, it, that he made an open show of him, yeah. triumphing over him, not just for his benefit, but for ours. Woo! Yeah. So that's, that's number two. First we saw creation, the Word and the Spirit working together. Then we just saw Jesus operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at the ministry of the early church. 
After Jesus' resurrection, he commissioned his disciples in Mark 16, verse 15. Now, once again, this is after he was raised from the dead and he appeared to them. Mark 16, verse 15. He said, go into all the world and do what? Preach Preach the gospel. Now, you may not preach like me. See, each and every one of you have a specific call on your life. Every one of you do. It doesn't matter if you're called to the ministry. God has called you to a different area in your life so you can be an example of what I'm talking about. Because there's lots of people that will never enter into this building until you witness to them, till you talk to them about Jesus, and most of all, live a life, a holy life, before them so that they'll listen to you. You know, there's some people I didn't want to listen to or follow because of the way they lived. We need to be examples, but we can be examples by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. So Jesus tells them to go preach into all the world. And uh, can you look at verse 20 there? Mark 16, verse 20. It said, they went forth and they preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them. The Lord worked with them. How did he work with them? By the power of the Holy Ghost. He worked with them confirming the word. See, it's, aren't you glad you're in this church? You're not going to hear Pastor Darrell get up and give you a sermon out of Reader's Digest. Come on now. Well, I don't like what he's preaching. Well, sometimes when the word of God is preached, it causes conviction. Because God wants us to change what we're doing. But when you hear the word, the power that's in that word will give you the ability to change. It was power that I heard from the word of God that caused my life to go from a pusher to a painter and now I'm a preacher. But it was the word that did it. I'm nobody special. But the Word is special. The Holy Ghost is special. And what God has done in my life, He'll do for you if you'll do what I did. And what I did is what I'm preaching here tonight. I'm adamant about the Word of God. If God says it, I can do it. If God says I can have it, I can have it. I'm not going to settle for anything less. Well, Brother Larry, you just don't know my situation. No, my friend, you just don't know the power of the Word of God. I mean, I was hopeless and helpless. And God brought me out of a pit and put me in a pulpit. Glory be to God. (laughs) And I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on His Word. I'm bragging on the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. But then Jesus tells him, you know, in Mark 16 there, verse 15, he said, go. That's why you come to church. But see, the church world has gotten it backwards. They said, come ye, come ye, come ye into church. And it's good to bring people. But I believe it's God's perfect plan for you to go out into your mission field. Where's my mission field, Brother Larry? Out these doors, out that door where you work, where you go to school, in the area where you live, in your neighborhood, in Walmart, wherever. When you see hurting people and the Holy Spirit prompts you, go say something to them. Go lay hands on them. Go tell them I love them. And you're obedient to do that. Then the power of the Holy Ghost is there to enable you to continue the conversation and and explain or whatever. Whatever rises up within you. See, when you take that step, when the Holy Ghost tells you to do something and you take that step, the rest will come. But if the Holy Ghost tells you to do something and you don't obey it, then you can't expect the power of God to come on you to sit in these chairs and get filled. See, faith always has, will always say something and always do something. 
So, Jesus told them to go. But look at Luke 24, 49. This is the only time Jesus told them to wait. Now, once again, this is after his resurrection. He said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you, but tarry or wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high. So we don't have to wait anymore because he was poured out then. You go and look at this same account in Acts. He said, you shall receive power, Acts 2, 4. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Woo! Acts 1, 8, thank you. Acts 2, 4 is about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. See, my wife was a teacher. My, she was Pastor Daryl and I's teacher in Bible school. She still helps me out today. <laughs> You know, us married men, we got two Holy Ghost. We got the, the great mighty Holy Spirit, but we got our wives. <laughs> so you, you young men that are not married, it's good to get that second Holy Ghost. <laughs> I told the guys this morning, I said, I, the other day I had my wife exactly where I wanted her. I had her down on her hands and knees. And she said, get out from under that bed, you chicken. <laughs> so we'll receive the promise of the Father. And they waited. They went to that upper room. There was 120 of them. But if you go back into Acts 1, it talks about there was... Jesus appeared over 500, but there was only 120 that obeyed what Jesus told them. They went to the other room and they got the promise. They got the great and hot, mighty Holy Spirit coming upon them. So we've seen creation, the Word of God and the Spirit of God working together. We've seen in the life of Jesus, the written, the walking, talking will of God uh, had to be in, endued with power by the Holy Ghost to do what he called him to do, and we see it in the early church. Just because they went and preached, God did work with them confirming the word, but then he told them to wait. It's necessary. Let me read that to you. Um, well, let's just go to John 14, 16. We'll see that. I'll get there in a roundabout way. John 14, 16. This is Jesus talking. He said, I will pray the Father. How, how many of you believe that Jesus got all his prayers answered? Raise your hands. I don't believe Jesus ever prayed a prayer that the Father didn't hear and the Father didn't answer. So he said, I will pray the Father. Now he's not only talking about them, he's talking about us today. Come on, y'all. I said, he's talking about us today, the children of Almighty God. You're a son and daughter of Almighty God, and this word is just as good for you tonight as it was for them back then. Amen. And he said, I'll pray the Father, and he will give you. He didn't say, well, I'm not real sure, but maybe he might do something for you. He said, I will give you another comforter. In the Greek, that means an exact duplicate, somebody just like him. See, Jesus was limited in a sense when he was in a physical form. He could only be at one place at one time, but now by the power of the Holy Spirit, he can be in you wherever you're at. He can be us when we're back in Tulsa or wherever we go. When we go back to Poland, when pastor goes to Poland or anywhere else, the Holy Spirit can be everywhere and everybody that's born again all at the same time. Amen. Woo! So he said, I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another helper, another comforter, and that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, the spirit of truth. Jesus said in John 17, 17, my word is truth. The spirit of truth whom the Father cannot, whom the world cannot receive, because he neither sees him or knows him. But get this, he says, but you know him. We know God. 
God speaks to us all the time about certain things. Now, it may not be an audible voice, but just here on the inside. Now, with me, I just kind of have a knowing. Now, sometimes the way God reveals things to my wife, she sees things. Maybe not like you see a vision or a television, but she kind of just sees things out here. That's how God leads people different ways, but he will lead each and every one of us if we desire it. If we say, Father, speak to me. Show me what your will is. I want to be in your perfect will. I I like to say this. I'm always going to be at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, most of all with the right attitude. Well, how can you say that, Brother Larry? Watch me. I'm always going to be at the right place, at the right time, with the, doing the right thing with the right people, with the right attitude. See, that's my faith declaring what's going to happen in my life. Because I know I have to live my life not just for me, but for you guys when I minister to you. Same way with a pastor. See, we can't just do what we want to do anymore, my brothers and sisters, if we want to fully fulfill the will of God in our lives. There has to be a change. I mean, uh, I thought I used to like to deal and do drugs and get drunk and, and live that kind of lifestyle, but that was the devil deceiving me. I thought that was fun, but this is what's really fun. Wow, glory to God. I mean to have the Spirit of God come on you and give you words I never even thought of before and tell me about situations and circumstances in your life. Man, that's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I'd rather be right here tonight doing what I'm doing than being the President of the United States. I was born for this, but it just took me 30 years to find out because of my stupidity. So anyway, let's get back here. He said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him. I said, you know him. I said, you know him. I said, you know him, young people. He'll talk to you and reveal to you. And it's vitally important for you to marry the right person to date the right person. And uh, you know, this may, you may not like what I'm about to say, but the Bible says you shouldn't even date an unbeliever. Come on. Said you shouldn't even date an unbeliever. Oh, well, I, you know, I'll date him or I'll date her and then, then I'll get him saved. No, they'll probably drop, pull you out of where God puts you. Very important. I'm so glad I got a good helpmate, not a dead weight. And the same thing for her. You know, she was in ministry for a long time. Taught youth, taught children, was a, was a head of a, a, a daycare center, taught at, at our Bible school, Raymond Bible Training Center. And she agonized over, because she knew my background. Before we got married, she looked at my student file. <laughs> but she didn't know the half of it. I scared the wits out of her on our second date, and I told her everything about me. Because, see, I figured it wasn't fair to her for us to get our emotions involved and us fall in love and then say, oh, by the way, I need to tell you that I used to be a drug dealer and a drug addict, and I used to do all this stuff. See, she needed to go into this thing with her eyes wide open, but she's still learning stuff. (laughs) Woo! And and we've been married 34 years in December. We just learn each other, but we learn the things of God. Amen? But he says, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 18, he said, I will not leave you like orphans. He wants to be our father. And you know, some of you young people, you may not have had a, a good earthly father or a good earthly mother, but God can be all that you need. 
God can take that place. You may have had a knucklehead father or a knucklehead mother and that lived a lifestyle like I did. And, but you don't have to go through some of the stuff that I had to go through because you're in a good place right now. If you listen to these, these couples right here in the leadership of this church and just make a determination. See, after, after I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and God delivered me from all that, God healed me, God filled me with the Holy Spirit and evidence of speaking in tongues and he told me the church to go to, I was determined that I was gonna be in that church every time that the pastor said we was gonna have a service because it took me 30 years to get messed up. And it took God about six months to begin to straighten me out. Straighten me out. And then I began to know what, I was, what he had me to do. But I can remember back when I was about 12 or 13 years old, I had a cousin that used to like to take me to Pentecostal camp meetings. And she'd tell her friends, because she knew I had a call of God on my life. I didn't. She, she said, she'd tell her friends, ask him what he's going to be when he grows up. And I used, they'd ask me, and I'd say, he's, I'm going to be a preacher. And I didn't even know what I was saying at the time. But God was at a young age like that. I mean, not filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, but I knew I was saved. I knew I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I knew from a very early age, my wife knew from the time she was five years old that she was going to be a missionary. I mean, God will start talking to you if you stay where he puts you. It's vital to be in the right church. And if you're from another church, I'm not trying to pull you out of yours, but if you're not preaching the word of God and having the spirit of God move in the services, you ought not be there. Yeah. Pastor Dale said he'd give me a big offer if I told everybody that. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. He didn't. I like to have fun, you know. Because I get so adamant about things, I have to kind of get you to laugh a little bit every once in a while. Or you'll think I'm mad at you. John 16. See, we're still talking about the Word and the Spirit working in our lives. Verse 7. John 16, 7. These are promises that Jesus gave us about the Holy Spirit. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage. It's to our advantage that I go away. Man, it would be awesome to have Jesus Christ right here tonight. But we've got one just like him right here tonight. And he's moving. Like I said, there's somebody here or on the internet, you're already feeling that warmth. That's that healing power of God working in you. And he wanted me to tell you that in, in advance so that you wouldn't think that something strange was going on. He wanted you to know in advance that he was going to start working on you. Now, he hasn't revealed to me who it is, but if he does, I'll point you out. But I don't know yet. So anyway, back to my scripture, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the amplifier says the helper, the comforter, the standby. He's seven different aspects, manifestations of the Holy Ghost. He, he will live in us, but also come upon us. The helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. See, it's impossible for Jesus to lie. If Jesus said he would send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit to us, he will, and he did. You read about it in the book of Acts. They were in that upper room. They waited like Jesus told them to wait, and the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing mighty wind. He filled the house, he filled them, and Peter, that had denied the Lord three times, went out into the streets and began to preach under the power of the Holy Ghost and 3,000 people got born again. 
That's what the Holy Ghost will do for you. He'll turn you into another person. Man, I needed to be turned into another person. My wife said, amen. <laughs> Verse 13 of John chapter 16. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, watch this, he will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you into the word of God. He will reveal, open up the word of God to you. And you know, they got a lot of good translations out now. Uh, you notice I'm not using the old King James. I like to use the new King James. My w wife likes to use American Standard. And, 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 and uh, I like the message. I like the Passion Translation. There's a lot of good stuff. The Amplified. And it, and it shows you different aspects because it's different translators. They open up things. However, when the Spirit of Truth has come, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, Jesus said, whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Well, I just don't know what the, what the will of God for my life is. Well, you need to take this scripture and begin to say, Lord, you said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead and guide me in all the truth and he'll show me things to come. Romans, it talks about being, the children of God will be led by the Spirit of God. That's not just for ministers. It's for every supernatural believer. And I believe every believer should live a supernatural life, even young people. I mean, I know there's so much pressure on you in high school and university years. I mean, they're trying to, the educators are trying to, brainwash. yeah, brainwash us. The news media tries to brainwash us and tell us But the Word of God will always reveal the truth. The Word of God is the will of God, and it will reveal His truth for you. And as you read it for yourself, it's not just good enough to come to church. You need to read the Word of God every day. You need a Bible reading program. You need to pray in tongues every day. Five, 10, 15 minutes a day. See, there are good habits. There are good things to be addicted to. And it's good to be addicted to the Word of God. It's good to be addicted to the Spirit of God because they will always give you, build you up and get you into the place that God wants you to be so you can do what God has called you to do with your life. Amen? Now, let, let's read a few verses. This was after Jesus was raised from the dead. He anointed Jesus and he raised him from the dead. And that same spirit that anointed Jesus and that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Let's look at that, Romans 1, 8. And I'm just about finished. But you know, when a preacher says that, that doesn't mean a whole lot. Romans 8, 11. But the spirit of truth that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in heaven. Huh? The spirit uh, of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells only in my pastor. Huh? Where does he dwell? Me. Me. In each and every one of us. He's there to lead and guide us into all the truth, to show us things to come, to bring the word of God to our remembrance, to keep us out of the traps of the devil. See, if we'll just listen to the guide on the inside, we won't have as many problems. Well, first off, you gotta understand that God didn't bring the problem. Now, God may have allowed the problem because of your disobedience, but God didn't lead you into the problem but the Holy Ghost will lead you out of any problem that you ignorantly or willfully get involved in. If you'll just repent, and that's not a cuss word. In some churches it is. It's a cuss word to say you gotta repent. Repent means this. 
That's what happened to me on July 6, 1983. I was going this way doing my thing and I saw the truth and I repented and I had never been the same. And I'm wilder now than I used to be when I was on drugs. My mother, when she was alive, she said, I liked you better when you was on drugs. Because I loved her and I wanted to give her the word of God. Now, I was probably a little forceful. I tried to shovel the word of God down, down her throat. And that's what she didn't like about me. It wasn't that she didn't love me and like me. It's just that she wasn't ready to receive what I had received at the time. But anyway, thank God she got saved. My brother led her to the Lord on her deathbed and she's in heaven. And I know she understands me now. <laughs> so, we've seen the Word of God and the Spirit of God. God created everything by those two, by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The living Word of God was anointed and he stepped into the ministry and began to do miracles signs and wonders, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, fed 5,000 with a little loaf of bread, and Jesus said we could do those things. And then we saw the early church. He told us, he commissioned us. Now, a commandment is, is not a suggestion. When I was in the military, they didn't tell us, they didn't give us suggestions, they gave us commands. And if we disobeyed a command, we'd have to go to Fort Leavenworth. In other words, you get locked up or, or you'd be severely punished. Thank God he's not that way. We have to will, willfully submit to what he tells us to do, but there's great benefits to it. Whew. Great benefits to it. See, because God will not work against your will. If he did, you'd have got saved 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago. God, won't, when we hear the word and we say, I believe it, we declare it, we act on it, that's when the word begins to work in us. When we believed in our heart, and confess with our mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. The miracle of all miracles took place on the inside of us, and then when we asked someone to pray with us to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and he came upon us, and we began to speak in other tongues, whoo, that was another glorious day. I got filled with the Holy Ghost just from reading the Word of God and it kind of scared me because I didn't know what it was. I'd heard about it, but I didn't know what it was. And then I told my friend that had led me, that had shared some scriptures, he just kind of laughed at me. And he said, well, that was the Holy Ghost. I thought the devil was trying to get me back because I'd confessed Jesus as my Lord. But see, I, I was ignorant. But God began to work in my life. That's a few years ago, July 6, 1983. But my desire, and I know it's God's desire, for all of us to come into the knowledge of the truth and step into the place that the blood of Jesus has provided for us and us to act like sons and daughters of God and do exactly what he told us we could do. Because there's so much more. I said, there's so much more. And there's a lost and dying world out there. There's people out there waiting on you to tell them about Jesus. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm sure there's so much pressure on you guys. Now, we, we don't do Facebook and Twitter and stuff. Hey, did you know there was a, a billionaire that just bought Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube? He's going to call it you twit face. <laughs> I'm just joking. But we don't do that, but I know there's so much pressure on you guys. You post and do this stuff all of, out there on the web and stuff, and in your school, you know, you're a nerd or whatever goofy person. And when I was growing up, you was a nerd or a goofball. I don't know what you call it now. 
But there's so much pressure on you guys. But God's got a whole lot more pressure to provide for you to get you into the place, keep you in the place that God has called you to be. Well, I might be an oddball if I tell my friends what I believe about the Word of God. They're waiting on you. Aren't you, let me ask this to you, young people. Weren't you glad that somebody told you about Jesus? Don't you wish somebody had told you about Jesus earlier? Well, the same is true for a lot of your friends. You, you may feel apprehensive about talking to them about the things of God, but they want to know the truth. They may not know it, but they want to know the truth, and God is wanting to use some of you to deliver them the truth. That's why you're coming to church. That's why you're in the youth group. That's why you're here. And that's true for us older folks. It's got a few more years on us. That's why we come to church, to get the Word of God, to have more of the Spirit of God so we can go into our mission field, not necessarily in another nation, but another city, another area of the city, another state, wherever God tells us to go and to flourish. Because see, if we will just Deliver the word in whatever way God gives us an opportunity to deliver it. The power is in the word. And the Holy Spirit will back up whatever we say if it's the word of God. It's the word and the spirit working together to fulfill the plan and purpose of God. And there's a lost and dying world out there. And they need Jesus. And God has given us the opportunity to take the truth to them, to take the word of God to them, to lay hands on them and see things happen in the bodies of our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our, uh, our students in the university or the high school that we go to. Now, I don't know everybody here. I, I told the guys this morning, there's a lot of new faces. You may be here. Somebody might have drugged you here. And, uh, but if you're here tonight and you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you died right now where you're going to spend eternity, I'd like to pray with you. And I'm not going to ask everybody to close their eyes and bow their heads because Jesus said, if you confess me and I'll confess you before the Father. If you're here tonight and you're not sure about your eternal destination, if you'll raise your hand, I want to pray with you. Anybody in this place? If you die right now, you know you're going to get to go to heaven and spend eternity with the Father God, with Jesus. Great. And there's another step. I've talked about it. it happened in my own life. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the promise of the Father. And he'll not only be in you, but he'll come upon you. But he gives us the ability to speak in a supernatural language, praying in other tongues. Well, they don't teach that in my church. Well, they should. But if you're here tonight and you've never spoken in tongues, You've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, but you want to, whether you're young or old. The Holy Spirit is a promise of the Father, and it's for everybody that's born again. So if you're here tonight, and you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, and you want a Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is old King James for Holy Spirit. It's not something spooky. Sometimes I say Holy Ghost because I used to read the old King James, but now I use new, use new King James. But if I'm talking to you, I, you say, I don't speak in tongues, but I want to. I won't, don't, I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence to speak in tongues. Just come on up here right now. Young or old, whatever your age is, tonight's your night. You might say, well, I've been prayed for before. I said, tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Anyone in here? Uh, 
Amen. I, I think to somebody else. That's okay, yeah. I'll sit down with you. Is there anybody else that's brave enough to come up here? I really believe there is. I guess I better stand up cause they, so the camera can see me. Okay, you just stand up. What's your name? Levi. Levi. Okay, now let me ask you. Jesus is your Lord and Savior, right? Yes. Okay. And you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. So he said, if you will, what's that scripture? I don't know. <laughs> you didn't give me enough. Acts. Uh, 19, can you put up Acts 19, 6? We're going we're gonna to look at this scripture here. It said, and when Paul laid hands on them, now I'm not Paul, but I'm a minister of God like Paul was. So when he laid hands on them, what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and proceed. And prophesied, yep. So when, when Paul laid hands on them. But see, they had to come forward just like you did. And so then Paul said, I'm going to pray for you. And the way I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to lay hands on you. And then when I lay hands on you, then the Holy Spirit's going to come on you and you, you begin to speak with other tongues. You say, well, what do I say? Whatever comes up out of here. Now, do you speak any other languages? Um, I speak a little bit of Spanish. A little bit of Spanish. I learned a little bit of Spanish back in the early 70s. And I, know, I still know a few words. I know a few words in Czech and a few words in Polish. But don't speak in Spanish and don't speak in English. But when I lay hands on you because of that scripture right there, the Holy Ghost is going to come on. The Holy Spirit will come on you and you'll begin to speak with other tongues. And see, here's the deal. Whatever you say is right. You can't make a mistake. Okay? So say this with me. Say, Father... I thank, you I thank you that Jesus is my Lord. That Jesus is my Lord. And I came forward, I came forward to, be with the Holy to, be, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when Larry lays his hands on me, the Holy Spirit will come on me and you're going to give me the ability to speak in other tongues. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now speak, speak more. Come on. Just, just keep speaking. You spoke a few words. Just keep speaking. Just keep speaking. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's easy. <laughs> awesome. Give me a five. Now, whoever else didn't, didn't receive because you didn't come up, it's your turn. Just see, that was so easy. But see, the word of God is easy. It's simple. It's, those words didn't come out of his head. They came out of his heart and his desire because the scripture said he could. See, you got to have scripture when you minister to people because like in Acts 16, I mean, uh, Mark 16, verse 20, it said, they preached and the Lord worked with them confirming the word, the word of God that they preached. See, I always know that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will confirm the things that I preach. When I preach about healing, I know the Holy Ghost will confirm some things about healing because of the power of the word. Did you have something, sweetheart, you want to? interject here. I got a few more things, but I think you have some. I just, a quick construction for this young man. Uh-huh. Um, you know, one of the things that the enemy likes to do is after you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he likes to come to you and say, well, that was just you. You just made that up. That wasn't really God. That wasn't really the Holy Ghost. And he tried that with me. And you know what I did? I just started speaking in tongues. And I spoke in tongues probably half the night after I got filled. I was so excited and so happy that I got filled. So I want to encourage you to do this every day. You know, you can do it while you're getting ready for school. You can do it if you walk to school, drive to school, ride the bus to school. However, at some point in time during the day, just take a few minutes and just keep that fresh. It's just like if you went to the gym, you know, and you work out in the first few days, man, there's pain. It's hard. But then after a while, you know, you start building muscle. But if you stop for a month or two, 
guess what? When you try to go back and start again, you have to start all over again. Yep. So don't just keep that fresh. Don't let it don't let it get old. Don't let it get stale. Just keep it fresh in your life. And here's the neat thing. God will help you through that to pray out your future. Say, well, I have no idea what my future is. Well, the Holy Ghost does. He'll show you where to go to to college if you go to college or what career to pursue. He'll lead you to the right person to marry. He'll lead you into the right career just by praying in the the Holy Ghost in other tongues. And this young man right here, you were sitting behind me. The Lord's been showing you some things about your future, dealing with you about something for your life in the future, and you haven't been quite sure about it. But this is your confirmation. You're hearing from God. It's right. So just go after it with all your heart. Okay? And, uh, you know, the the thing about praying in tongues, uh, we always do it a lot before we go to minister because... We don't know. Some of the things I revealed and talked about the first of the service, I had no idea there was something that came out this morning. Uh, and, and Pastor Darrell confirmed that what the Holy Ghost revealed to me was right. I gave some instructions to someone. Well, I didn't know that. But in praying in tongues and just being quiet and listening. But see, this is not just for ministries. It's not for people that are called to full-time ministry. It's for everybody because all of us are called into some kind of form of ministry. When you get born again, when you say yes to Jesus, he immediately begins to want to use you because then he's in you and he can speak through you. He can work through you because he can't work through other people. When I was doing drugs and stuff, he couldn't work through me because I didn't have a relationship with him at that time. But now that I'm born again, now that I speak in tongues, he, he can work through me on behalf of other people. He'll work through, through me on my behalf, on behalf of my wife, on behalf of your pastors, wherever we go. But see, it's that, that relationship by, by staying full of the word, reading the word every day, praying in tongues every day. You get closer and closer and closer to God and it keeps the devil at bay. Do you have anything else? Not right this time. Okay. Well, there's a few other things. If you're here on the internet and you've had arthritis or any kind of joint pain or stiffness, I command it to be gone right now in Jesus' name. God revealed that, and now in Jesus' name, I command arthritis to leave your body. You cannot function or operate in God's children any long. Pain, stiffness in people's body. You have to go right now in the name of Jesus. God revealed it, and by the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is above every name, and you have to obey me, pain. You have to obey me, arthritis, and you have to leave right now. In Jesus' name, you cannot stay in their body. You cannot persist in your assignment in the lives of God's people or those on the internet. In Jesus' name. Hernias dissolve now in Jesus' name. I said dissolve, hernias. Dissolve, dissipate, be mended now in Jesus' name. Gross. The same thing. I command you to dissolve. I command you to dissipate. Be mended in Jesus' name where the growth was. Infections, allergies in the name of Jesus. Infection, your assignment is broken. Allergies, your assignment is broken. God revealed these things so that I could speak it out and I could take authority over it in the name of Jesus. You have no right to work in the, in the lives or bodies of the people any longer. Infection or allergies be gone in Jesus' name. You have to obey in the name of Jesus. 
because the name of Jesus is above every name. It's above the name of allergy. It's above the name of infection of any kind in Jesus' name.